As a former Bain consultant and interviewer, I've probably given practice cases to nearly 100 different candidates. What shocked me the most was that no matter what resources candidates used to prepare, whether that was reading prep books or using online resources, 90% of the feedback I gave was exactly the same. In this video, I'll share with you the top five most fatal mistakes candidates make in interviews. If you can avoid making these mistakes, you'll have a great chance at setting yourself up to be a top 1% case interview candidate. Mistake number one, not addressing the right case interview objective. When the case interview starts, you'll be given a challenging business question such as deciding whether to enter a particular market, deciding whether to acquire another company, or deciding how to price a particular product. In any of these situations, you need to understand the objective of the situation. Is the company trying to increase profits? Is the company trying to increase market share? Or is the company trying to increase profitability? Profit, market share, and profitability may all sound similar, but they are actually completely different problems and can totally change your approach to the case. If you're increasing profits, you can either sell more product, increase prices, or reduce costs. If you're increasing market share, you must increase revenue, as reducing costs won't help you. And finally, if you're trying to increase profitability, you can either increase price or reduce costs, as selling more product won't increase your profit margin. In every case interview, make sure to confirm what is the right objective. Mistake number two, using generic frameworks that don't fit the case situation. When it comes to making frameworks, most candidates come into the interview with a single pre-memorized framework or multiple pre-memorized frameworks. They will then use these frameworks for every single case interview, regardless of what business problem they are given. The issue with this is that these frameworks cannot be used for every situation. There will be times when you get a case interview that has an unusual or weird business situation. If you use these same frameworks, the elements of your frameworks will likely not be relevant or appropriate for the situation. This makes your framework not only useless, but interviewers will easily be able to tell that you are simply regurgitating memorized information and are not thinking critically for yourself. To solve this, I recommend the following approach. You should memorize a list of 8 to 10 potential framework elements. These should be broad but mutually exclusive elements such as market attractiveness, competitive landscape, company capabilities, customer needs, profitability, risks, and strategic alternatives to name a few. When you are given a case, mentally run through this list and pick the three to four elements that are most relevant to the case. If you still need elements to make your framework reach a total of three to four elements, then brainstorm your own element to add to your framework. With this strategy, you not only guarantee that your framework is relevant and useful to the case, but you demonstrate to the interviewer that you can think for yourself and create unique, tailored frameworks for every case situation. Mistake number three, not structuring an approach before doing market sizing or solving other quantitative problems. Consider the following market sizing problem. What is the market size of glasses in the US? Most candidates will jump right into the math, starting with the population of the US and then immediately performing some calculation on it. While this approach might seem fine to some candidates, the top 1% candidates differentiate themselves by laying out an approach up front with the interviewer. This not only makes them appear as a highly logical and structured thinker, but also helps them avoid making unnecessary calculations and going backwards when they reach a dead end with their math. In this problem, you could propose the following approach before you even do any math. Let's start with the US population, estimate the percentage that have vision issues, estimate the percentage that wear glasses, estimate the frequency in which people buy glasses, and then estimate the cost per pair of glasses. Multiplying all of these steps together will get you the market size of glasses in the US. By laying out your approach up front, the interviewer can easily understand how you are thinking about the problem and the rest of the market sizing problem becomes simple execution of arithmetic. Mistake number four, not structuring answers to qualitative business questions. Imagine getting asked the following question. What are potential barriers to entry to enter the wine market? Most candidates will answer by listing the first few ideas that come to their head. 
they might say things like capital, land, or distribution channels. While this approach might seem fine to some candidates, the top 1% candidates really differentiate themselves by structuring the answers they give. In this example, a simple structure such as thinking about barriers to entry as economic barriers and non-economic barriers helps both facilitate brainstorming and gives off the impression that you are a highly logical and structured thinker. Economic barriers might include things like land, equipment, and other capital, while non-economic barriers include things like wine production expertise, brand name, and distribution channels. The next time you answer a qualitative question, try to structure it with a simple two-element framework, such as economic, non-economic, short-term, long-term, or internal, external. This simple addition can make a big difference. Mistake number five, not delivering a firm, concise recommendation. A lot of the times, when a candidate delivers their recommendation, they'll summarize all of the work that they did before proposing a recommendation at the very end. This is not the right approach to take, as the conclusion of a case interview is meant to be a concise summary of your recommendation. It is not a regurgitation of everything that has happened during the case interview. To fix this, I always recommend my students to follow this simple structure. First, clearly state what your recommendation is. Second, follow that with three reasons that support your recommendation. Finally, end by stating what potential next steps could be to confirm or further validate your recommendation. This structure keeps your recommendation simple, but very clear. If you pay attention to not making these five fatal mistakes, your case interview skills will improve drastically. When you're doing practice cases, make sure to focus on improving one thing at a time. Trying to incorporate all five of these strategies at once will be way too overwhelming. But with practice, you'll be on your way towards becoming a top 1% case interview candidate. If you found this video helpful, and if you're ready to start preparing for case interviews seriously, check out our best-selling book on Amazon or our interactive comprehensive online course.